Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. To hear God's word and to know the message of peace that he brings to us is a blessing that then goes out from us. That living at peace with others comes because of the peace that we have so that we can share his message without worry about what people are going to say or what we look like, but simply sharing that message, and that's how we worship, giving thanks to God for the wonderful gifts that he's given to us. Our order of service is service of the word. You can find that at page 38 in the front of the red hymnal. If you wish to follow it there, it will be on the screen for you to follow as well. We'll begin our service with our opening hymn. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin, and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Let us pray. Mercifully grant, O God, that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. For without your help, we are unable to please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson before us this morning is from Numbers chapter 11. Here God pours out his spirit generously and the gifts that he gives are to be made use of. Those gifts then praise God so that others may hear the word. It does not matter on who or what God places his spirit on but that he gives us this opportunity. Listen now to our first lesson from Numbers chapter 11. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. So Moses went out and told the people that the Lord, what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the seventy elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they, they did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but they did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. This is the word of God. Our psalm this morning is the second part of Psalm 51. It's found on page 87 in the front of the hymnal. We'll sing it together in its entirety.
Our second lesson this morning comes to us from the Apostle James's St. James's for St. James's letter, chapter four. Listen now to his words. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? This is the word of God. Now have our anthem by our choir. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson this morning will also serve as the basis of our sermon text. Listen now to these words. Teacher, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. 
And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salted again, salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We'll continue with our next hymn, Hymn 192. open with this prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's nice when the world is at peace, isn't it? But it doesn't seem to last very long. There are lots of reasons that people use for breaking the peace. A ruler decides that he was shortchanged and so he wants more. People think that they're being oppressed so they want out. But it doesn't have to just be world politics or, or what goes on among countries that breaks peace. Maybe it's even in the sports world. There seems to be a team that is doing really well and accomplishes a lot of things, but then the individual members start to think that they're getting the raw deal. They're not getting enough or they want the attention, so they have to do their own thing. That peace is broken. That peace can also be broken at school or at home or at work for any number of reasons, some of which that we may have caused ourselves and and sometimes even when we tried our best. What can we do to keep the peace? It seems that peace is the most important thing. When Jesus tells us about the peace that comes to us because of knowing our Savior, but how quickly peace becomes a personal thing, I'm not getting enough. There's a danger even that the peace is broken when we notice how others are getting more attention than we are. 
Maybe others have more gifts or we're just hoping to kind of go back in the background and not be seen. All of which breaks the peace. In our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus is talking to his disciples again and again about how it is that God is going to bring about his rule. How it's how Jesus is going to give up his life on the cross and how people are actually going to put him to death that are going to bring the ultimate peace. But the disciples start focusing in on themselves and what keeps them peaceful. And they start to hear about or see someone who is sharing God's word that's not in part of their group, and, and they're, he's getting attention, and they're not. Beware of those who seek peace as only as long as it holds within them. Hear how Jesus teaches his disciples about the peace that comes and the peace that actually is peace for us and how he talks to his disciples about their focus and their wish and their plans. First part of our verse, or first part of our text, Jesus is addressed by his disciples about someone else. Teacher, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. The disciples had a problem. Their problem was that they weren't getting the attention that they wanted. In fact, maybe there might have been a little bit of lingering jealousy because they had tried to cast out some demons earlier in this, in the, a few chapters earlier than this, and they weren't able to because of what they were focusing on. Then they saw someone else that was casting out demons. Notice the reason that they wanted to bring it to Jesus' attention. He was not one of us. It's easy for us to get all caught up in the work of the church and the spread of the message of the gospel, but when it's not getting us attention or it's not becoming as easy as we think it should be and someone has to work hard and share that message against people speaking against it, we start to wonder, is it really all that good? Disciples had another problem with this man as they recognized it was in Jesus' name. And so they didn't take that as good enough. You see, this in Jesus' name that, the disciple, that this man was casting out demons was not simply just throwing in Jesus' name at the end of what he was doing but it indicates that this man was actually following what Jesus had taught. He believed in Jesus as the Savior of the world, and so he knew that because of that there was power. But the disciples would far rather see what they could accomplish than what someone else is accomplishing. How easy that comes to us as a congregation Oh, so-and-so is so much better at that than I am. Let them do it instead of me. Or I put in my time. It's someone else's time now. Or I don't really want any attention. I just want to be able to sit here and, and listen to God's word. You can see how if we take all the focus off the Word of God, we can come up with all kinds of excuses of why we should or why we shouldn't be a part. Even to the exclusion of the message of the Gospel. Sometimes we even like to add past a participation as a reason why, why it's okay if someone else is doing more than I am now. Let's see how Jesus addresses this with his disciples. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name came to the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. 
I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. Jesus addresses the first issue of is this man really carrying out God's will if he's not one of us? Jesus points to faith. In my name is what matters. Those who know who I am and what I've done is the most important thing. It doesn't matter how good I look or what I've done in the past. It's all about what brings Jesus glory. So that we look at each, every aspect of our lives. Am I giving God glory in this when I do this or don't say this or say that? Am I giving God my best when I withhold the things that I've been given? Jesus says that even the little things that are assisting or helping others is a blessing to the kingdom of God by even giving a cup of water to someone, knowing that it is Jesus who has rescued us, that we rescue or help others. Oh, but that little cup of water doesn't always bring us glory. In fact, sometimes it even goes by unnoticed. Are we content? Jesus wants us to first look at ourselves and the motivation for our doing our works or giving God praise and glory. Am I there to give my very best in my, my test or the way I speak to my teachers or my classmates? But what if I've been arguing or brooding with someone over so many years and it's just they're too far gone? Jesus says, giving to people in God, Jesus' name means I set aside those differences and that jealousy. <laughs> that it's the message of the word that goes out and promotes what it is that Jesus has done. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. After we see where it is that we stand before God and how our even thoughts and minds are, are oftentimes focused on ourselves, we see how much we need a Savior who came that didn't look for reward. Instead, he came to this earth so that he could give up his very life. After doing everything perfect as God wanted, he now said, now I'm going to give up for those who haven't done it all. He sees our pettiness and our, and our self-absorption. He sees our, our worry about who's receiving what, and he says, that separates them from my Father in heaven, and I don't want that to last. So he gave himself up on the cross for none of his own but all of ours. Because he has given up his life for us, we are made perfect. We have that perfect life before our Father in heaven. And so how wonderful it is to know that we've been the receivers of God's love when we've deserved none of it. Jesus then takes that application to how wonderful a blessing that we have, that we should not take it for granted for anyone else. That even the little things are things that we should not put in front of people. He says, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. By little ones, he's not referring to just little or babies or child. He's referring to all those who might be overlooked, all those who might be weak, weak in faith or weak in stature, and reminds us that there should be nothing in this world that causes us to overlook someone's needs so that we can get out of it for ourselves. 
would be good to be removed from the picture, not, not kill ourselves, but not even be there if we were going to take advantage or cause someone else to lose their reward. You see how this peace that Jesus gives us then is a peace that, that goes out to all people. Not because we've earned or deserved it or because we've built this place or we've been here so long. But because we have a peace that comes from God that's not going to be taken away and gives other people the love that God has given to us. How might we demonstrate how important someone else's life and faith is? Can we do so by giving of our own time, our own resources? Can we do so by speaking encouraging words to others or speaking to those that are having a hard time? You see, this peace that God gives us through Jesus is a peace that, that rouses us to, to share that message with others. And that's where Jesus continues that message. <coughs> But this time he draws the attention on what it is that sin comes from so that we don't miss out on the peace that we have. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. <coughs> is it really our hand, our foot, or our eye that causes us to sin? Jesus is not talking about us cutting body parts off, but recognizing how important it is for our eternal life. And to recognize that that sin first comes within us. So as we seek to strive to share the message of God's word, don't let things that affect our hands, our feet, or our eyes get in the way. Don't let things that cause us to enjoy our our recreations or places that we go or things that we see draw our attention from the message of the gospel because if we allow the places that we go or the things that we do or the things that we see get so much attention in our lives they'll drive us away from our Savior and we'll be found in a place where it doesn't matter what we have left, it will be gone. Jesus warns even us who have heard his message and have been around his gospel and know who our Savior is to focus on the message of the gospel. Don't consider yourself too strong. But see what a gracious God we have that brings us the truth. And that's where his next verses draw us to the truth. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. The salt is going to be with everyone, and so what is it going to do? Is it going to be for our good, or is it going to be for our harm? Look at God's Word as the answer for where this salt comes from. When we see in God's Word how, how we need a Savior and see our sin, it points us to our Savior. It points us to the one who has done all things for us so that it rescues us from hell. But if we set aside that word and said, seek for things that make us feel good for this life or get attention for ourselves, even at the cost of others, 
then that saltiness is going to burn us because we set aside what God has done and decide to do those things for ourselves. And because we have the saltiness, the blessing of the gospel, we can be at peace with each other. We have the same God who gave us his son so that our lives would last forever. And so now when I talk to my brothers or sisters, when I do things for them, I'm not doing it for my sake, but I'm doing it for the one who has rescued me. See, living at peace is a matter of faith. There are lots of things in this world that might offer us peace. Peace that makes our life easier or, or peace that brings me more recognition. But the peace is, that matters is the peace that we're given by Christ. And so that peace then can also be shared with others that we might live at peace with them. Picture it as the peace that knowing that the brakes of your car work. That you can go up to a stop and hit those brakes and then you're going to be fine. Well, that works until the time that it doesn't happen, right? Or the peace that I get from knowing that my football team is winning at the moment. It's going to be a time where that's going to end as well. The peace that I have that I can, I can do the sports or recreational things that I love, but, but I'm not going to be able to do that all the time, am I? Those are all good, peaceful things. But our peace comes from the peace that lasts for eternity. Don't set aside the peaceful for eternity for things that go away quickly. Brothers and sisters, live at peace with all others. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, your Savior. Amen. Let us now confess our faith this morning. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offering. A reminder to please sign the friendship register and pass that along your pew. Please stand for prayer. Lord of our lives, by sending your Son to live and die as our perfect substitute, you provided forgiveness and salvation for a world of sinners. We praise you for your generous saving love. We thank you for reaching out to each of us personally with your word and the water of baptism. You have set us apart as people who belong to you, people whose purposes in life is to receive your love and live to your glory. Gracious Father, remind us that you have called us to live for you and not for ourselves or according to the standards of the world. Help us devote our time, our talents, our energy, and whatever you have placed into our hands to those things that will be of value for eternity. Help us to love you and others and to use things as you desire instead of loving things and trying to use you and others for our own selfish desires. May our hearts belong to you completely so that our lives can be devoted to things that really matter. Bless all who are suffering or in need. 
be with the lonely and the grief-stricken. Move us to use the unique gifts you have given each of us to bring comfort and help to those who need it. Bless the government and the church and make us blessings to both. Crush the selfishness that comes to us naturally and fill us with joyful generosity. Grant that the gifts we bring to you may show that we are just as diligent and just as interested in carrying out your business as we are in carrying out our own. We dare to ask all this, Father, not because we deserve to ask it, but because your Son has earned for us the right to approach you as your dear children. Amen. Amen. And now hear us, Lord, as we pray boldly and confidently as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn. pray. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
We close with our final hymn.